Hello guys and welcome to episode 69 of the 10 minute modeling challenge. In this episode I'm just going to model a simple shed. You might have remembered a few episodes back, quite a while back actually, uh, I made a, a saloon, so western inspired, and for some reason I'm back into the western inspired mood and I've been creating a lot of assets and animations uh, for a little prototype of course again and maybe it'll turn into a game, maybe it won't. But the main thing is I'm creating a bunch of tutorials related to this and I've already recorded uh, about five uh, episodes worth. And the first episode is going to be modeling the character again, which you've seen a lot lately that I do. Uh, the, in the second one, I'll do the clothes a little bit more in detail than in my last 10 minute video. And in the third one, I'll be doing a lot of keyframe animations. All the actions that you see on screen right now, I've uh, keyframed those keyframe by keyframe. And uh, I've also put them into this NLA editor, so the non-linear animation editor in Blender. And that was mainly to create this uh, overview of all the animations that I could uh, display when I was doing the intro for the video. And maybe I'll do a video on the NLA as well, but mainly the video is about creating all the individual actions and animating these characters so they can be imported into Unity or any other game engine and animated in there. And in the fourth part, I'm modeling all the assets that you see around. So all the props and all the environment, the buildings, the stones, the hay bales, barrels and everything like that. And in the fifth one, it's about importing it into Unity. And more importantly, how do you get these characters into Unity the proper way? And also, how do you deal with this axis conversion? So as you might know, Blender uses Z up and uh, Unity uses Y up. So the axis there has always been a pain but there's a little bit of a better way to do it now if you do the export procedure correctly and you tick this little new bake axis conversion tick box in Unity. It's a lot better than it used to be. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better anyway. As I put all these video clips into uh, five parts yesterday in I've switched over to DaVinci Resolve to edit all my videos. So I imported all the footage there and it turned out that the first episode I think is about an hour and a half. The second part is about two hours and that was sped up two times, so what I do all the clothes modeling, modeling. And in the third video, all the keyframing animations, I didn't really want to speed that up because then you sort of lose, uh, when I stop and start playing back, everything looks like it's fast forwarded too much. And I thought about keeping it into uh, in, in its natural shape and just talking through the whole video. But uh, that's 10 hours of footage, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do, uh, maybe I'll do it like the uncut 10 hour version of it. And then I'll try to cut out all the most important bits so and, and make that into a proper video that's hopefully going to be less than an hour. <laughs> so it'll be a bit of a beast video otherwise. Um, not like Mr. Beast, but like just a beast video. And the last video, which you might find the most interesting out of this series, maybe the animations will be really important because I haven't covered that so much and I've done a lot of different keyframe animations as you can see. So that might, might be of a particular interest. And then the last one, the part five, where I import it into Unity. And that's a shorter video as well, about an hour where I go through all the details. I set up a bunch of sample animations and how you transition those using the animator component. So you can go from running into diving or and how you blend animations with the upper and lower body. So I'm covering that. So for this video though, I'm just gonna make a, a simple shed to go with this environment. I'll hide this and of course, everything that you see on the screen has derived from the original cube here, which is in here. And this is what I'll be starting from again. Select an object, select a different object with a shift key. Make sure that you have the different object selected last. Press Ctrl L and then do materials and that'll copy the material from this uh, other object that you had active into the one that you selected. When I tab into this one, I'll have the correct colors. And I'm using the Infancia gradient palette here and you can download that from the description if you wanna use this palette as well. Just go ahead and use it if you want to. And I'm gonna switch this to a brown color there. So this is going to be our starting position. Let's just make sure I've got screencast keys running. So a little bit different here. Instead of starting with the default scene, I've got a lot of props around here. Sometimes I keep everything in, in the view here while I animate or while I model. So just to get the feel for it. Ready, steady, go. I'm off. Yeah. Tab into edit mode. And I'll just bring this one up, hold the control key to snap it. I was going to say it, but I didn't have any vertex to snap it on. So that's okay. For buildings, I usually go underground slightly, so they stick down if I've got uneven terrain, could be good. 
and I'm going to do individual planks here. So let's just uh, scale in edit mode here, X, and then I can look at the reference roughly at the size planks I want. Maybe scale Y and scale X. So this is going to be the size of the planks, should be good. Top view, G, and I'll put... So this is the origin of the center. We'll just make a little shed here or an outhouse it could be. Shift D to duplicate that one. And shift D, should we do three massive planks like this maybe? And then top view, shift D to duplicate that one. Rotate, hold the control key to snap it. You could have also, of course, uh, snapped it in a different way. Actually, I don't even have to be that picky. I'll just, because uh, it doesn't have to look perfect. In fact, I don't want to go, uh, I do that mistake a lot where I model it, try to get perfect angles, L. And it actually looks better if it's, especially for this time era here, if it's not that perfect. L, rotate, let's just freebase it. Is that even a word? Scale X, I wanna make these planks a little bit because I have to fit a door here as well. So maybe like this. And here apparently I only copied the top face, which we didn't want. So move those down and need to extrude them up. There we go. So that's gonna be the rough shape. I'll shift select all the top ones here now because we need it a little bit taller. And there's quicker ways to do that, of course. I'll use the slow one. And then now I can go to side view. Apparently not. There. And let's see, Alt Z to see through. Then I can see how big the character is there. Shift space G to get the manipulator where. Okay, apparently I lost my selection there. Control Z side view. Now we see how tall the character is, so the shed should be about this high, I think. Yeah, and I want to have a, a roof, like the roof should slant a little bit, so one way to do that would be to rotate, I guess, uh, but that wouldn't be any good, so Alt Z, one to get the vertices, and then I'll just wing this one a bit as well. Lower in the back a little bit, a bit higher here, bring these up. There's other ways to do this too. There we go. And now let's put a roof on. So shift D, let's just duplicate one random face there. Side view, rotate, and E to extrude that on. L to select the linked, G. And we'll do the same size planks here at the top. Up a little bit so it doesn't poke through. Shift D to duplicate it, and then just we'll slide these manually here. And we'll make the roof a little bit wider here. It's gonna rain through this thing, but that's okay. And there we go. L, L, L. Select those. And maybe a little darker wood at the top there. Should we put some overlay planks here? Shift D. Scale X. Maybe we can protect this rain here. Just to there. And I think I extruded this in the wrong direction. So I can do Alt N and recalculate outside. And that flips those normals. So now we've protected the interior there. Okay, and we need here, shift D, scale Y. So just press, okay, scale Z. Press the Z key to lock the rotations there to the Z axis, to the Z axis. <laughs> and we'll do it here. And shift D to duplicate that one. There we go. And we should do a door as well now. So I'll just copy this one again. Shift D. We'll do the door a little bit different. Scale X just to distinguish it from the others. And select this face. Edit it. We've got 5.51 on the clock. So L. Oop, L. Do a darker wood color there. Shift D. Duplicate. Shift D. Duplicate. And Shift D. Duplicate. So it's a little bit wide. Maybe we'll select all of them. Scale X. Compress them a bit. Scale Z and there's the door and should we put a hinge on we should maybe we'll do uh, a cutout here as well maybe this plank will do control R control R put a little window up here we don't want to make it too open so delete that one faces shift select this press F to fill it shift select that F to fill that on and that should be all right and now we'll put uh, maybe a crossbar here uh, shift D to duplicate that one, scale Z, move it out, hold this door together. And there we go, we've got 450 on the clock, L, shift D, and for some character maybe we'll do uh, 
some thicker corners, maybe that would look good. Scale X, scale Y. And usually, like I said, the, the video where I model all these props is a lot longer than... Uh, so I don't really stress like this usually when I model. I sit and listen to some music, drink some coffee, and then I just play around with different shapes and stuff. And think, oh, what should I model next? This could be fun, this could be fun. And I'll just go, go with the flow. So there we go, Shift D. It's quite relaxing actually, you should try it. And just model something, just something random. Scale X, it don't have to be the perfect sizes. That's the nice thing about this era. It was just handcrafted with whatever wood they had, or so I imagine anyway. So there we go. And maybe we could even put some more character on this. Should we have a little hole here? Put some hinges on here as well. Maybe we should do a slight Control R. Let's try to do. Uh, oh, Control R. Control R. There's probably better ways to do this. Control R. Control R. Well, this is one that came to mind. Control R. Control R. <laughs> Control R. Control R. And Control R. And then I'll just put a little peephole through here so you can see if anyone's in there. Should probably be heart shaped, but it's all right. We'll do a little gun hole. <laughs> you can shoot out of there. Okay, and then we need hinges, so maybe we'll do Shift D. And these again, like, this is the beautiful thing with low poly. They can look in whatever way you want. So we could even, even put, uh, move it here, E to extrude that on. And we'll just like do block hinges here. So just like big iron cl clumps here. Shift D, and you could spend more time on them if you want, but I think that's fine. And then we could uh, do the, actually we need somewhere to, to have, to dump things in. Literally, hide those and pick here, shift D, duplicate that one and scale Y, scale X. And here we'll just put the thing here. Ha, simple, simple as, <laughs> I was gonna say simple as that. That's where it goes anyway. G, a lid, that's okay. Alt H to unhide everything that we just hid. And we've got two minutes 23, so I'll just do random uh, control R loop cuts here. Rotate, control R, rotate. Just to make it a little bit more interesting wood wise. They, remember these saw these, them, they, them. <laughs> they saw this out of thin air, I was gonna say. They didn't, because they used like trees, of course. So what I'm trying to say is that the less perfect it looks, the better it'll probably look. So compromise here between number of polygons and the visual look of these things. So I'm just loop cutting this. There's a way to randomize this as well, of course, to, to not do it manually, but it's quite fun to just play around with it manually. Sometimes with the randomize feature, you get some uh, overlapping geometry, which isn't always the best. You can even scale here, make it a little bit different. Control R here as well, scale, control R. and. For the corner ones here, I think I'm gonna even add some more character and do them even darker here. G. 121, we can also do, here's uh, use with caution, but sometimes I do this, so K for the knife cut tool. And you can add this, but remember, if you try to warp it afterwards, it'll look less good. So G, you can put some, uh, and when I say with warping is if you start to move around the loop cuts and stuff afterwards here, then you'll have some distorted faces probably. So be careful when you use this. Add this type of stuff at the end if you must. Or you could just texturize it. You could, of course, uh, UV unwrap it and do it the old fashioned way. The nice thing about this method is that it'll scale indefinitely. You can zoom for forever, basically, and it'll always have great quality. Uh, I've got 37 seconds. I think what I'm going to do is put some framing here as well. So Shift D, duplicate that face, E to extrude that one up, L to select it darker shift d we'll just do a little peephole here a bit higher up as well oh. uh, there we go and shift d move it down rotate on the x-axis scale z rotate again doesn't have to be perfect it isn't so this is why <laughs> i get away with that i think shift d duplicate that one and we've got four seconds to go so i think that's it that's our little outhouse shed where you do your business. Oh, this switched off on itself. Perfect. So let's see if it works. 
It does. What I would say is uh, you'd want to separate this door into a separate object. So everything uh, in this is its a separate object now, and to do that, you probably want to do tab into edit mode on this one. L to select all these linked, including the hinges I'd probably use. P and separate that by selection, and then call that cube door. It could be renamed shed. We do that after it's uh, enjoyed its glory of being named uh, cube for a while. And you need to change the pivot point as well, because if you try to rotate this door now, rotate around the z-axis, that's one flashy door for an outhouse back, back in those days. That would actually be super engineeringly cool if it did that. How cool is that? It's like a Star Trek opening of that door. But well, let's change the pivot anyway. And to get the center point of the door vertically here, you could, uh, one way to do it is select both of these faces in tab in edit mode, and then you do Shift S cursor to select it, and that figures out the medium point between those. And then tab out, right click, and then set origin to 3D cursor. And now when you rotate, voila, it rotates nicely around that pivot point instead. And you could do the same thing for this uh, if you need to open that little thing there. One more thing you could do when you import this into Unity or in any other game engine is that you could actually separate all the planks and everything into separate objects. You did uh, either you could do that through this way, tab into edit mode, A to select everything, P, and separate by loose parts. And now you have a whole bunch of cubes that you should really rename, I guess, into like shed plank, shed plank, shed plank. And the, the nice thing with this is that you could explode this shed then. If you throw a dynamite inside and uh, blow it up, all these parts could be having rigid bodies and uh, that'll just explode all over the place. That would work in any game engine, of course. But I'll control Z out of that one for now. All right, folks, there we have it. A quick little uh, episode about uh, another Western theme here. I see a trend here. I'm looking forward to releasing uh, the tutorial videos in the end. I'll see how, go how detailed I'll go on the editing on those. Maybe I'll release the big uncut versions and just ramble a lot of uh, junk throughout the video and try to add as many tips and tricks as I can during the modeling. Or maybe I'll do compressed versions. We'll have to find out. All right, that's going to be it for this week. Uh, come back next week for another episode of the 10 Minute Modeling Challenge. It's going to be episode 70. Amazing. <laughs> Until then, take care and I'll see you. Bye for now. Oh, hit the like button if you liked the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I've also got a Patreon page if you want to head over there and give that little bit of extra support. And that's patreon.com slash Infensia. Until next time, have a good one. Bye for now.